Clarita here, and I've got a new sponsor, DistroKid. If you want to release your music into the world, DistroKid's the easiest way to get your music into all the major streaming platforms, unlimited uploads, and keep 100% of your royalties. And because you're a Design Freaks listener, you get 30% off. Go to distrokid.com slash VIP slash Design Freaks. DistroKid. Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Design Freaks podcast. I talk about music industry, art, and design, and the stories and people behind the graphics. Welcome, friends. I'm Clarita, and I'm your host. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, this is episode 53. Today, my guest is multi-Grammy award-winning graphic designer and artist whose client list includes Netflix, Warner Music Group, Criterion Collection, from those to indie record labels such as Light in the Attic. We're going to talk about uh, the Light in the Attic release, Lou Reed, Words and Music, May 1965. Uh, he's designed for Del the Funky Homo Sapien, De La Soul, Joni Mitchell, Black Sabbath, Old Dirty Bastard, Curtis Mayfield, Mick Jagger, The Cars, The Jesus and Mary Chain, The Grateful Dead, uh, his projects for Woodstock, Back to the Garden, The Definitive 50th Anniversary Archive, That's a Box Set, and What It Is, Funky Soul and Rare Grooves Box Set, both for Rhino Records, earned him Grammy Awards for Best Boxed or Special Limited Edition Package, with multiple Grammy nominations for Black Sabbath, The Dio Years, Fish, The Clifford Ball, The Smith Tapes, and Grateful Dead, Get Shown the Light. We talk all about that. Um, he was selected by the city of Los Angeles for the design of the citywide campaign against uh, American, Asian, Pacific Islander hate called LA for All. He's taught typography at UCLA Extensions. He's the founder of Fixed Design, the one and only Masake Koike. Um, what a pleasure getting to hear all about his process and, uh, everything that went into the Lou Reed packaging. It started in 2020 and, you know, working with Lori Anderson, um, what a treat. And I'm so glad you get to hear this. Uh, I also had a smile on my face the whole time I was editing. Um, <laughs> really makes me happy. Um, but first I want to do some thank yous. Don't fast forward too much. This is not a long intro, but I want to thank you so much for listening. If you enjoy the show, please share it with other vinyl and design freaks and leave an iTunes review and subscribe wherever you listen. Um, thanks to those who have. Um, and also, I got my Instagram account back. Thank you, Louie Gallucci and, fr and your friend, your mysterious friend who helped me. Really appreciate it. So my Instagram is at underscore design freaks podcast i couldn't remove the underscores i tried but um the old name wasn't available so i'm going to leave it but the entire archive is there from the very beginning october 2018 so thank you lou i also wanted to thank sfi records for the package they sent go check out their band camp it'll be in the show notes etc uh sfi recordings at bank uh dot bandcamp dot com uh, they put out all kinds of psych, electronic, weird rock, and they screen print all their packaging for records and cassettes, and it's gorgeous and very cool. Um, thank you to everyone who sent messages uh, encouraging me about the show, but also about my essay in the Barney Bubbles book. It is available now. Go get it. And go to designfreakspodcast.com to see images for this and all episodes to buy that book. Uh, it'll link you to 
barneybubbles.com, buy merch to donate, etc. And if you'd like to sponsor the show and for more music related podcasts, check out ruinousmedia.com. What could go wrong? <laughs> And here's my chat with Masaki Koike. Three, two, one. Hi, welcome. Hello. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much uh, for joining me today. I wanted to ask you, I have so many questions for you. <laughs> Shoot away. Yeah. I'll see if I can answer at least half. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'll do my best. First of all, when I saw the Lou Reed packaging, we'll go back and like contextualize this. Sure. Yeah. But, um, yeah. First of all, you should win another Grammy for the Lou Reed packaging. <laughs> I think I screamed when I saw it. Um, Thank you I, so much. Yeah. I, 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 okay. I feel like I'm going out of order, but I, I really fell in love with the Lou Reed packaging. Then I got, I started, mm -hmm. I started looking into your work more, started kind of digging in and you've done so much great work. How, what are you up to these days? Are you freelancing? Are you, how, how does life look right now? Right now, right now, it's pretty great. Uh, you know, and I, and I am I am independent, freelance, small business, however you want to call it, a DBA. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah. But uh, it ebbs and flows. And I, I do, you know, if, I, I always like to describe myself as, as more of a, of a graphic designer um, that's able to sort of be multidisciplined. Meaning like, you know, whether it's designing a watch or whether it's designing a Lou Reed package, it's like the thought process is really, you know, why I want people to come to me. Not so much like, you know, have you ever done a billboard before? Or, you know, I, I like mm -hmm. I like the different kind of ways of of sort of thinking and applying what I know to different problems, you know. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um being independent allows me to do that versus if I worked in house, you get assigned to an account or something, or you do the same repetitive motion over and over. And quite honestly, that, that kind of, I could see how secure and stable that path could be, but um, mm -hmm. I just creatively like to kind of, you know, jump from one project to another. Um, so, even though I do a lot of work in the music industry and I would love to continue doing stuff in the music industry, you know, the budgets are getting cut. It's just getting harder and harder to kind of make it your main sort of source of income. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and I'm 50 now, you know, and, and things start, the responsibilities start to grow, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, you know, when you're in your twenties and thirties, it's, it's a lot of fun, you know, and uh, it's, it's a, uh, it's, it's a great, it's a great format, I think, for a lot of graphic designers, especially when you're starting, even more so though, even with it, with a lot of experience in the industry, um, because mm. music packaging to me is very unique in that, you know, you're dealing with typography, you're dealing with photography, you're dealing with illustration, you're dealing with like packaging and structural design. Um, and, you know, it's all up to you, you know, and I yeah. love that aspect of it you know, so it's everything, it's yeah. everything, you know, and I really like that. I don't want to just do like layouts all day long. I don't want to just do image making all day long. I kind of mm -hmm. like this whole experience. And I think it's even more important now that with, with, you know, digital streaming becoming the dominant force, you know, if, if we do make a Lou Reed package, for instance, like, you know, to make it something that people would really want, you know, to make it, yeah. To make it not just a nice cover, but all the way throughout, <laughs> you know, to go all the way with it, you know, uh, that yeah. that really excites me because I, I think, you know, I think at the end of the day, people really want ownership of things, and I think growing up in the Star Wars generation, you know, yeah. that that was like <laughs> that was the defining moment for licensing and for merch, and it, it makes sense. You just kind of want to own it, you know. You don't feel yeah, like you own anything. A collectible, yeah. 
Yeah. And it that Lou Reed packaging, I mean, it is from front to back. I haven't held it, but I can tell that it probably feels good too. And I first saw your design in the digital space. And I think it works across all those mediums. Um, and mm-hmm. so, of course, uh, I do print design too. And, you know, of course, when I saw the packaging, I was like, oh, I have to get my hands on that. Um, <laughs> nice. I, how you do so much like interesting die cuts, uh, die cutting, and how do you let the client, like, uh-huh. how, what is that process like of presenting an idea to a client that would be like, I work in academia. I mean, okay. that would be over the top. <laughs> <laughs> is it hard to get the, to get people on board or no? Cause you've done so uh, much of that already. Um, it, it can be, you know, there's always that challenge of like, you know, I could dream up all kinds of different ideas, you know, it's, it's always this, this sort of like chicken or the egg, you know, scenario where it's like, well, I want to show the idea to the client, but is it possible to do structurally? You know, Mm -hmm. I think the, the one that really challenged me the most and pushed me the furthest was, was the, was a get shown the light. For the, the Grateful for the dead. dead. That yeah. that was pushing it to them. I, I I look at that box and and I I <sighs> I kind of I kind of uh I'm I'm kind of amazed that it turned out the way it did just because we push so much and I work so closely with the structural engineer um, and I, I feel really sorry for him now because it, I didn't <laughs> you know it's it's like you don't it, it there's a, there's a big challenge of like you know you want to do die cuts you imagine it a certain way. You swear mm-hmm. you've seen it someplace before where they have these really beautifully intricate, you know, laser cuts or whatever. Oh, but then you propose yeah. it and they're like, well, the lines can't be that thin, you know, because it might tear. It's right. str- you know, it serves a purpose because right. it is a package. So, yeah, a lot of times, like, I have to be careful, you know, like, OK, you know, like even for Lou Reed, you know, there were certain there's a certain amount of holes that you could put on a jacket before you lose the integrity of what the jacket's right. purpose is, right? So we don't yeah. want to show Laurie Anderson and like the Lou team an idea that we can't execute. So there's a lot of back and forth, you know? And I don't want them to get excited about an idea either, you know? Mm-hmm. If we're like, and then go back to them and go, oh, sorry guys, can't do it, you know? So it is a lot of that back and forth. And then, you know, mixed in with all that is budget. Budget, you yeah. Know? Like, can we afford what's... to do it? <laughs> What's the limit for like the the weight on the the jacket? Like, could it be like two hundred pound? I you know I don't know I don't know I really or like. Is there something heavier than like I know you did that chipboard design? Yeah, um, yeah, that that seemed pretty sturdy, but it yeah it, it was. And you know, it, it's it's again, you know, I think you're referring to the what it is box, but you know, yeah. it, you know, again, it was it was one of those those issues where it's like the chipboard is sort of made, you know, to be wrapped. It's not really made to be the raw material, but in that specific Mm -hmm. release, you know, it was all about sort of this unproduced, unheard of, you know, funk and soul tracks from that, from the sixties and seventies. Right. So Mm -hmm. I thought we're not going to wrap anything. There is no veil or facade. We're not doing a litho wrap. Mm -hmm. We're showing the actual structure. Right. Kind of in the same way that like these guys were underproduced musicians. Some of them only had Mm. one record. So, you know, keep the rawness of it. Right. So the chipboard wasn't necessarily made to be that way. And every chipboard, I mean, I got, I remember that project so vividly because there were so many flags that went up and then it came down to the screen printing. And then uh, I remember the, the, I went to the press check and the sheets look like perfect. And then I was like, that's, that's not, that's not really the look we're trying to go for here. Like, it's almost like Mm. for a screen printer, that's, you know, all the flaws that I wanted is something that they are trying to avoid. So what we found out was that the board actually has two sides, one that's coded for printing, one that's uncoded for non-printing. And when we flip the board, the non-printing side, then all of a sudden we started to get all these little specks of you know, peaks and valleys, right? So wherever there was like a valley, the ink would not go down. And so each board was unique. And so that, I mean, those are the things that, I mean, in manufacturing that I, that, I mean, it depends on the project, but I really like that sort of like one-off, you know? Yeah. So, and some of them, you know, had some really 
pretty gnarly, like, you know, scruffs in them. And, and I, you know, I thought that was the beauty of it, you know? Right. Cause everyone's different. Everyone's different, you know, everyone's different and uh, there's a uniqueness to it. But again, I think, again, the graphic designers, you know, concept, I think is the, is the basis of it all. Like you can't do that same idea for another artist. Like, you know, if it doesn't suit the concept, you know what I mean? Right. Right. So, yeah. So, uh, and you won your first Grammy for that. Um, that was like 2008, right? Yeah. For what it is, funk, soul, and rare grooves. Yeah. Um, and that was a compilation. Um, what label was that on? That was for, for Rhino. That's for what, Rhino. Okay. Yeah. So you've won two Grammys now, the most recent for, also for Rhino, correct? For the Woodstock yeah. box set? <laughs> yeah. Um, congratulations on that. Um, Thank amazing. You to get recognized um, as a graphic designer. What was that like? Oh, the first one was out of control. I didn't know what the, I, I didn't, you know, that was the first time I was nominated. Um, and quite honestly, yeah. I, I didn't really, I didn't know that the Grammy even gave like, you know, an award for packaging. Uh, so I went in yeah. completely naive. Um, and you know, what's the chances, right? You get nominated and that was like, that was just like, wow, I mean, I, I, I was like, I, I wasn't, uh, you know, I wasn't prepared, I guess, you know, let alone wow. to like, you know, to, to take the trophy home. I was like, wow, mm -hmm. what is, what's, what's happening here? <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm a very low key person. Like I, I, I live a very sort of basic life, you know, mm. so all that excitement and all the, all the shiny stuff and all the crazy, like, sort of like, you know, things that come along with it. I mean, it's pretty awesome, but you know, you get kind of spit out of it. And then the next morning, I remember I had a client, I, was, I think I was working with a, with an agency at the time and, you know, from another industry that has no connections to the music industry. <laughs> and then, you know, here I am just kind of, I came out of a whirlwind and, you know, I had a meeting or something at nine in the morning, and, you know, it, it was so like dry and boring. <laughs> And I was like, oh, I wanted yeah. to tell them like, man, I just want a Grammy. I, I don't, <laughs> but they didn't let me take the trophy home and I'm supposed to get it later. And I didn't tell them anything, <laughs> but it just was a weird sort of, you know, place to be where I was like, you know, in the music industry, it means something, but you know, to other people, it's just sort of like, Oh no. Yeah. 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 Is, is that, You're like, yeah. It's like, do you know who I am? No. And we don't care. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. W once in a while, I'll, I'll say that, you know, like, yeah. You know who I am? <laughs> No, demanding a table at the restaurant yeah, yeah. Um, show bringing your grammys yeah. with you yeah right 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 I, oh my god it's but it, it was it's it's really it is it is really sort of uh nice to be recognized for what you do um yeah and and i mean we are artists but we're also product on the production side yeah so it's like doing both yeah yeah you have, to, have to you have to yeah i think every every good graphic designer is a good production designer for sure <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, yeah. but, um, yeah. So, okay. Getting to the, back to the packaging thing. Um, and you're trying to keep the integrity of the Lou Reed record. Um, mm -hmm. and it looks beautiful. Uh, how, how was it? I was wondering, how was it working with Lori Anderson? Were you already a fan? Yes. I mean, who isn't, mm -hmm. I, I don't, <laughs> I mean, who seriously, who, I mean, it's like, you know, I, I, I honestly had like a couple meetings with her one meeting. I think it was like one Zoom call meeting or something with her. And she was very pleasant, just as you expect, you know, very sort of um, taking it all in, you know. And, you know, I was extremely nervous, you know, because I had to mm -hmm. present this idea to her. And, you know, and the suggestions she made were, 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 were awesome. You know, she had, uh, she had this suggestion of like, you know, I had... I had all these different ideas at first, of course, and then she started whittling it down a little bit and, you know, kind of getting to the nuts and bolts of it. And, um, you know, it's funny. Sometimes you get, you get thrown off because you're on a certain, you know, um, track of how you're imagining this whole release to be. And then somebody comes in and, and sort of broadsides you, but then that could be good or bad. In this case, I think it was, very helpful and very good because I think she kind of got me back on track as to like, mm. you know, even the color palette, like yellow and blue is not a color palette that I would pick. That's not, 
you know, it's not, it's just, it's just, it's very sort of, uh, you know, it's like, I think of radioactivity, danger signs. I think of yield uh, signs. I think of like yeah. a bee. I think of like, right. you, you know, uh, all these other sort of things, you know, I mean, I guess there's a smiley face too, but you know, right. that I see no other color palette now. I think it, it was the right, it was the right decision, you know? And I, and I look at it from a distance and I'm like, God, this is Lou Reed. I mean, obviously you think of Transformers, you know, that was yellow yeah. and black, but I think it kind of taps into, you know, Lou Reed as well as, you know, what is, you know, for, as well as the work he did for the Velvet Underground. Um, so it, it makes sense in the, in, as, a, as a concept, you know, and I think those are the moments where she really kind of helped shape the way I thought of the whole project, you know? Wow. So, that must have been quite a cool process. It was totally yeah. cool. She she yeah, and it's one of those situations where it's like, you know, you you kind of meet somebody that, you know, you've only kind of like, you know, have sort of been following before this whole following thing is was cool, you know? Like mm -hmm. oh superwoman, like that music video to me mm -hmm. is like it's like one of the best best music videos to me. I just love the simplicity and just, you know, the experimentation of it, you know? Yeah. She's bold. She's brave, Very. you know? She's been, yeah, blowing minds since, I mean, I remember when I was a kid and my aunt had that um, big science record. Yeah. And I could not stop looking at it. And I was like, she's a magician. I thought she was magic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but... Yeah. And so that makes sense that she would have this vision um, mm -hmm. and help you get there because you did achieve the starkness yeah. of Lou Reed, like the, mm -hmm. you kind of distilled down into very simple, you know, not simple, but just um, yeah. almost 2D, like flat, um, but without being stripes, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. uh, without being like the Velvet Underground stripes, like being kind of a different Lou Reed and it just it looks so cool on, yeah. on everything digitally on that that gif I saw or or the little yeah. video I saw online and then on the tote bat like on the record of course but yeah 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 I, I you know and, and then this whole we, we had a you know this this whole idea of like having a die cut hole you know and and making quarter inch holes you know was was another sort of moment where you know, I was like, wow, that's really kind of abstract and interesting to me. Like the like a quarter inch hole, I think of sort of like, you know, three hole punch, right? Is about a quarter mm -hmm. inch hole. The record spindle is about a quarter inch hole. And then I started <sighs> thinking like, oh, words in music. Right. So then all of a sudden there's like this connection. No one's going to get it. I get that. But Whoa. for me, I was like, wow, that actually makes a lot of sense. Now, it makes sense oh with the God. title, you know. So I made sure all the holes in the package are all quarter inch. Um, mm -hmm. And so I don't just scale it down for the seven inch that's inside the larger package or the, or the, you know, five inch or CD jacket. So they're all the same size hole, you know? <gasps> so. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Those little things that like, you know, you sort of have to hold on to something. And, you know, I think early on, you know, we, we, we we didn't have anything to work with and this was really the only kind of image that we could use for the cover um i think we had a few to choose from but we used you know the other two i uh were from a yearbook and the one we ended up using for the cover is actually a, a photo of a group photo um i think taken out outside of of pickwick studios um, with John mm. Cale and Walter De Maria and all these other, I think a couple other people from from the Pickwick Studio staff. But you know, imagine it's a full body thirty five millimeter shot of all five guys standing and leaning against the back of a car, and then there is this guy Lewis Reed. And then so you can imagine that's the only photo we we had to sort of work with. And to blow that up, I was like, you know, I personally, I I I really like those sort of those challenges uh, versus having like a thousand photos that were sent to me and I have to pick one. Um, I kind of yeah. like that. This is all we had to work with. But then again, that's another moment where everything, the concept tied in again, where I thought, well, what happens if I just completely blow this thing up, 
you know, yeah. bitmap it, you know, and then, you know, see how far I can push even the bitmap to a point where it's like wow. up close, it just looks like a bunch of dots. But from a distance, it looks like a face. And from a further distance, you notice that it's Lou Reed. But it's this whole concept of like, you know, when these recordings were made, he was going by Lewis Reed. And so for me, this was sort of like, oh, this is Lewis becoming Lou, right? It's like mm. you see this abstract face. And then as you pull the sleeve out, you notice that there's a tighter sort of bitmap pattern of the same image. Mm -hmm. So it, and it's a little bit more clear that it's Lou Reed. So it's this idea of like, okay, from like the jacket, which is really abstract to the sleeve, you know, you see this transition of the same photo cropped the same way, but with a tighter bitmap pattern um, wow. that shows Lou with a little bit more clarity, you know, sort of an artist wow. finding themselves, you know? Wow. So becoming more in focus, becoming more in focus. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas the sleeve, you're right. It's like, um, what, uh, Barney Bubbles said about what, when he used the half tones for that adverts album cover. Yeah. And he said with gay advert on the front and he said, I want these as big as golf balls. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I, I, that's what I thought yeah. of. I was like, Oh, it's big as golf balls. Yeah. 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 It's, 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 a, it's, in, it, you know, it, it's, then, you know, just the way the way that uh, I, I had presented an idea, you know, and I, I had probably done at least like 50 to like 70 different bitmap sort of rhythms um, mm -hmm. where or patterns where, you know, some of them were like really, really abstract. And I and I mm. fell in love with that. Like it was just you couldn't even really tell it was a head. You know, and it just got <laughs> okay. way out there, and then, and then the the Lou Camp sort of drew me back in a little bit and said, like, we, we can't tell what's going on here. Is that his ear? You know, and uh, I, and I was, and I, I remember telling Matt at at, at at Light in the Attic, and I was like, oh man, uh -huh. you know, I I feel like I feel like uh, you know, I, I I'm falling in love with this more abstract version of it, and then we came to the compromise, which is a cover, you know, and. At first, I was like, ah, oh, the dots are too tight. It's just not working. But then again, another thing came up where I noticed that, like, the grid of, like, the die-cut holes, if I could align it along with the bitmap image, you know, mm -hmm. that could be sort of interesting. So it's not just a bunch of deliberate holes on the cover. It actually aligns with the bitmap um, that I created. So there, there I go again, making something that should be relatively simple and making it really <laughs> complicating. And so, like, I was able to figure out a way that was, you know, the printer could could replicate the dot the 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 die cut holes, and it meets their requirements. And so, adjusting the bitmap image so that the holes are sort of aligned with the bitmap of of Lou's face it, was a lot of yeah. back and forth. You know, whoa! I know, really? I know, it's pretty far out there. You know? The print production good. part, yeah. I was thinking that must have been. And you started this in 2020, correct? Oh yeah, this I've, project. You know, yeah. I I, I had wow. gone to a, I had gone to a, a light in the attic Christmas party. I think and it was 2019, mm -hmm. and then I met. I was reintroduced to Matt. You know, and he's mm -hmm. a great guy. It's a great label. It's a great team of people. Sure. You know, sure. and um, yeah, he 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 had uh, whispered something in my ear, you know, about a few projects that you know he was interested in me working on, and then uh, next thing you know, you know, I'm a sucker for interesting stuff like this, and I'm always sort of uh, looking for fun projects to to work on, and you know, I think mm -hmm. there was a hesitation on his part as well because, you know. A lot of the work I did, I have in my portfolio. They're all sort of from like the larger sort of labors, late labels, and the yeah. bigger names. And I was like, just you know, let me know. And the moment he said Lou Reed, I was like, all right, <laughs> let's just, yeah. yeah, let's just let's just go for it. And I went to his office and listened to the recordings, and I was like, wow, mm -hmm. this is pretty pretty unique. Wow. Yeah. I was gonna ask how you got hooked up with Light in the Attic, and I know they do primarily reissue stuff. This is something different for them. It is. Have you ever? Yeah. Have you ever done reissue design? I'm so curious about that process. Like how? Um, how do you do that? Not not really. I did a little bit of that. At, you know. 
at, at, uh, at Rhino, um, mm -hmm. you know, because, because of like my sort of foundations of like really coming into form as a graphic designer took place at Rhino, which is a catalog label, you know, right. everybody started, you know, I started to attract more of that, you know, crowd of people that had a library of like, you know, of legacy artists or what have you. Right. It wasn't okay. frontline work, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, you know, a lot of times it, it comes up where it's like, you know, if, if, you know, it's like a box set like this, or it's like a collection of a certain artist's work, you know? And so like a lot of the artwork sort of gets redone, you know? Um, yeah. So it's, it's, it's one foot in the past, one foot in the future, you know? And I think that's mm, yeah. what, one of the challenges I think of, uh, of what, what, what we're trying to do, even with like Woodstock or, you know, what it is, or even like with Lou's, you know, to me, it's not so much like the, the people that were at Woodstock are probably not going to buy this box. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know the, the <laughs> stats on who buys this stuff. But to me, yeah. it's more important to keep the legacy alive, right? So if a 20-year-old yeah. that's getting into music, you know, uh, knows or just vaguely understands what happened at Woodstock 1969 and is slightly interested and sees this and then they get excited, that, get, that to me would be the ultimate sort of achievement of like, okay, we, our job was well done because it sort of resonates with them. So I, I always try to make sure that I don't make something look like it's from the seventies. I don't see the point in doing that, you know, right. like it's more yeah. of like updating it, like trying to make it look, um, you know, contemporary or modern, you know? And yeah, I can't stand when people put like fake ring wear on record. Yeah, like, what is that? I don't <laughs> know. That that's a that's a perfect example of something that like when somebody tells me to put texture on it, I'm like, oh no, you know. Uh, the, yeah. yeah, I'm so glad the distressed type phase is uh, almost gone. Like, you know, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's distressing. All right. Yeah, it's distressing for sure. And uh, you know, it's like when I was in school, it's like you know, it's like you you're learning Photoshop and everything you do looks like Photoshop vomit. You're kind of doing it without thinking about it. You're, thinking, you're kind of doing it because you can, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think yeah. as you become more mature, you know, as a, as a designer, you sort of, you know, you sort of grow up out of that. You know, you start to realize that those are sort of gimmicks, you know? And, yeah. and you try yeah. to push yourself to, like, make it equally interesting without re relying on, on those things, you know? Right. Um, and you know, I am looking at through your catalog now on Discogs and I'm just noticing this common thread of like color and pattern. I'm curious, do you make all your own patterns? Do you source them? I'm not going to ask, you don't have to say where, but do you, do you make everything yourself? I do. Yeah. What? I do. Oh yeah. <gasps> I, 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 uh, and I might be speaking at a term here or speaking really just of a personal experience, but it does feel like, you know, Southern California, especially graphic design, a lot of it, mm -hmm. the education of it, you know, and I'm sure, you know, people from Art Center or from a Cal Arts will disagree. But, you know, I went mm -hmm. to a Cal State, you know, mm -hmm. I thought I was going to do psychology and transfer to the arts department. You know, um, mm -hmm. even though I've been doing art all my life, I never thought about making a career out of it. You know, mm. I, I kind of, it, 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 there's this, you know, they, they kind of, you go to school, design school, and, and they kind of teach you the programs, you know, yeah, and it's a lot of yeah. stuff to learn, you know, just learning mm -hmm. what Photoshop does, what Illustrator does. Um, and, mm. and uh, I think along the way, like I, I was sort of, I would look at other people's work, you know, and mm -hmm. And uh, through design annuals or what have you, and, you know, not really realizing that there's a team behind it, you know? And yeah. so, like, I started to get interested in just sort of the idea of image making of like, well, you know, if these people are doing it, I should probably learn how to do it too, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I, I kind of fell into this whole thing of like, even my first sort of real job, you know, it was very common for a client to come into the office and say, we don't have anything. The movie's not even shot, but we need a poster. We barely have a title, maybe a billing block, <laughs> you know? And then oh all of God. a sudden, I, you know, I'm put up to the challenge again of like, you know, we don't have anything, no assets to work with. Um, oh. That kind of, I don't know, that wasn't deliberate on my part at all. 
it just became a thing where I was like, okay, well, if we don't have anything, maybe it's a good opportunity to create something. The bar so low, maybe I could do something <laughs> interesting, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Wow. Well, well done. I mean, your work is impeccable, um, I think. not sure if i'm if graphic designer is really even the right term for me i sometimes mm -hmm. i sometimes i think relate more to the graphic artist you know yeah um yeah or it's like you kind of you know are given a project without with the idea that you're supposed to make the assets you know in, mm -hmm. in the case of like grateful dead well actually i don't think they use photos for their cover of the band at all you know, mm -hmm. so, you know, you, you kind of are given this limitation of like just using the steely, for example. And yeah, my God, gold. that is like, the, <laughs> I mean, that that logo is like yeah. one of the most memorable logos to me. You know, even as a kid, I didn't even know anything about the Grateful Dead, but I'd have see somebody with a patch on their backpack. And I'm like, what is that? Like, why is yeah. the skull like taken from a top view? And, uh -huh. You know, it just there. It was just a an incredible looking mark and so to take mm -hmm. that and to try to make something out of it you know is a uh, is a lot of fun to me that's fun yeah yeah that it's so iconic and then i've seen so many parodies where people put yeah. different things in there it's, yeah it's fun yeah I know. um so speaking of old stuff and um actually are were you god i am just flipping through get shown the light right now and it is that's crazy. I just have to comment yeah. on it. The color alone and then the die cutting. Oh my God. The it's die cutting was, was, was pretty comical. Wow. You know, it's like the layers. Oh. Yeah. That, that was, uh, that was, that was thanks to a whole team of people that were patient enough to kind of bear with it with me and like go through this whole process. You know, a lot of it, again, it always starts with a concept for me, you know, like that mm -hmm. whole unveiling of that package really started with the idea that these tapes were missing and gone for so many years. And, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of the deadheads were copying cassette tapes of this show and it became a legendary show. Um, and some people were even questioning the show because they were saying that they played the song so well that it couldn't have been in one show. Wow. On top of that, they didn't have the master tapes. So, they never re they never re-released it properly um, until many years later they got the tapes back and sure enough it was one show so it was this idea of uncovering the tapes so that's why there's like so many layers of opening and closing and I I love stuff because that's the only thing that I think physically you can do with a package um, to to draw people in that's something you can't do digitally you know no. it's sort of opening yeah. all this up there's magnets there's sort of like this interaction with the pe with the with the you know listener open it uh -huh. and sort of unveil you know this the content you know and yeah and there's a glimpse inside and then the gatefold so the gatefold has magnets yeah in it oh wow it's pretty okay. it's pretty wild um you know and and uh the pattern on the outside the blue sort of pattern is actually mm -hmm. The word may, like M A Y, um, kind of rotated and repeated. So what? it's not just like a like an abstract pattern. It actually says may, and it's repeating over and over. M A Y. Yeah. I, now I'm looking for it. It looks yeah, like an X, but I, yeah. It's I a little hard to. It's you kind of. It might help if you rotate it 45 degrees or so because you'll see like. Uh -huh. You know, this is the graphic designer side of me where it's like, you know, the, the, the letters M-A-Y are all like symmetrical. So then I started to play off the symmetry of it and then noticed that like, oh, this could be kind of an interesting sort of pattern um, mm -hmm. or beginnings of a pattern. And, uh, you know, it's one of those kind of hidden, I guess, Easter eggs that I don't expect wow. anybody to figure out. But, you know, no, people I've that seen. are in the know <laughs> love it, you know. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. If someone did figure it out without you saying it, they'd probably be like on DMT or something. Yeah. I, that would be mind blowing. <laughs> and I don't think anybody has. 
you know i don't think anybody has but wow. that that that's the whole riddle of it i don't you know it's yeah. just like when you go see like a fine art painting that's abstract or something you know it's like everybody mm -hmm. takes something different from it you know yeah so i love it i love those little hidden things the, the little easter eggs yeah. um so I ask uh, all my guests, what is the first record cover that you remember like from your childhood that really stuck with you? If you had, uh, or maybe a poster, um, if your parents had a collection? Uh, no, my parents didn't have much of a collection at all. They're, mm -hmm. and if anything, they were so like enamored with Elvis, but you know, we weren't <laughs> like a music family, you know? Yeah. You know, I remember really getting into music, well, couple come to mind, I guess, if I, if I mm -hmm. can cheat a little bit and say yeah. there's a couple. One is uh, Black Sabbath Paranoid. Yes. <laughs> I, I, I just, I, I was terrified by that cover. And then, <laughs> then, you know, you hear the record and, you, you, you know, you realize that this is a whole other level of music here. Um, I didn't know music could be that way, like so dark and so ominous and you know, mm -hmm. and, and the first, I think, lyric he says is like, what is this standing before me? And then it ties to the cover of this. I don't even know who's who that is, but it's just the way it's shot, the way it's treated. You know, the fact that it's called Black Sabbath. I was like, this is, this is so <laughs> fascinating. I don't know if it's good or bad, but I felt something, you know? Yeah, um, right. My, my life and my generation, I think, parallels like hip hop. So when hip hop came out, it was mm -hmm. at Music Plus, and like I remember, uh, what it just there was no hip hop or rap section. It was all mixed in with rock or whatever. And I think mm -hmm. the first record I bought was um, LL Cool J's Radio, and it had this mm -hmm. massive ghetto blaster on the jacket. Mm -hmm. And I remember looking at it like, <laughs> man, that is so that is so cool. I I do remember that thinking. I don't wow. remember that one. That's funny. But it never it never entered my mind that maybe you know i'd want to design a record cover one day <laughs> you know well and then you're talking about the sabbath cover and you ended up fast forward you ended up working on that box set right yeah i mean how crazy <laughs> that that's weird right yeah that's <laughs> so crazy. weird yeah yeah and you you had uh that was included the that cover in the i know yeah the artwork that's yeah. so funny <laughs> i know it's the black box and um that that was pretty surreal, you know. Knowing the right person, knowing sort of the having you know having the fortune of good timing, you know. But mm -hmm. like I remember when um, Jerry Hyden, you know, had left me a voicemail saying that there's an opening position at Rhino. I think I might have went there that day, <laughs> and just said, "I'm dropping my portfolio off. I'm coming." I, I didn't, you know, honestly, didn't. I knew Rhino's a record store. I didn't know a whole lot about them. I just sort of yeah. was like, God, you know, I need to, I think I was working at Nokia Design Center at the time doing really boring sort of corporate sort of packaging work. Mm -hmm. And the thought of working at a record label was like enough for me. But, you know, how lucky was I that it was actually Rhino and wow. met a whole team of people. And, you know, it was just yeah. really the perfect fertilizer to make me sort of grow. Um, it, it was the mm -hmm. optimum sort of place for me because... They let me be, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, wow. the Sabbath one was, I think my first box set. <laughs> and I was like, Oh geez. Well, the color palette is probably going to be black. You know? Yeah. It's um, pretty black. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that good memories. I, I wish I could redo it, but you know. Oh, I yeah. think it's perfect for them. I mean, and that is such a dream for any designer to work full time at your full time at a label. Like that's, yeah. That is a dream, but also your boring Nokia work. Don't you think your packaging background helped you? Yeah. Oh. You know, I, I, I kind of wanted to always sort of, you know, be a well-rounded designer. So I kind of mm -hmm. stayed in the entertainment world and I went to the corporate world. I worked at, I even worked at Saatchi and Saatchi. It's like a big mm -hmm. ad agency for a little bit and, you know, jumped around really trying to figure out what, what I was trying to do, you know? Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah. That, that, that there was no sort of goal. It was just mm -hmm. trying to figure out wh wh where can I where can I exist, you know? Right. Yeah, and what's what feels interesting or yeah. Um. 
so next thing I always ask, can you, are you allowed to, or can you tell us what you're working on? Is there something coming up that's exciting that you um, talk about? I can't talk about. Uh, okay. Yeah, I know. You know, that's, that's, that's kind of the, actually, you know, uh, <laughs> last uh, week I was, I was, uh, I was at a signing for the Lou Reed sort of serigraph poster. Mm -hmm. uh, that was like pretty exciting because uh, we printed this 18 by 24 um, screen printed poster of the cover. Ooh. It came out like awesome. So I can definitely talk about that. I think it's a limited edition run of like 250. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, that that was pretty exciting. But um, yeah. Oh, cool. Other than that, you know, there's just other NDA stuff. Okay. <laughs> That's usually the answer to that question, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Just it's kind of nosy. a bummer. It takes a while, you know, and that's, that's the mm -hmm. thing. You're excited going. I'm always like, you know, I'm always gung-ho about the process, mm -hmm. you know. And then, uh, you know, it takes like months. In this Lou Reed case, like it it's take take about two years and you know to keep that enthusiasm going for all that time you know it could be a little bit challenging and by the end of it you're sort of like you know not quite over it but you're sort of like you know you, you just no matter how well you designed it no matter how much you did you know you get you sort of get a little like you know tired of looking at it you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but i think with this one in particular though with lou with the lou, lou reed package it was because so much time went by, you know, mm -hmm. that like now that we have the physical product in our hand, I feel good about it. You know, I feel like we made the right decisions and everything was done, you know, at its best. I agree. A lot of times, like I, I do stuff and it's like overdone. It's underdone. I should have mm -hmm. I should have stuck to my guns. I should have pushed harder or, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I guess I never really look at everything as good or bad. It's more like, you know, what the percentage is. You know, mm -hmm. like I've never done anything that's a hundred percent, never, you know, where I feel no. like, wow, this is exactly what I wanted. Um, uh -huh. every moment there's like, you know, something happens, there's a certain decision that was poorly made. Um, mm -hmm. there was, you know, various issues along the process that, you know, kind of chip away at the hundred percent. Um, oh, yeah. but then don't ask me what the, uh, the flaws are. <laughs> I said that to a client once and they were talking about get shown the light and she's like, what was wrong with it? And I didn't want to tell her because oh. then I don't want her to look at the flaws. <laughs> you <know>? Yeah, <laughs> no, but there's always, that's the thing about design is it's not art. And there's, and yeah. especially if there's always a client and there's always something that needs to be released that we have to like release yeah. from our body and not, yeah. and not let us hold it, you know, hold us back because Overall, you know, like I have to take a step back sometimes and go, okay, get a little distance and then, you know. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Uh, overall, I think it's excellent. If you ask me, I was not involved, but um, the same year you, you won a Grammy, you got this amazing project. And I think that was probably such a whirlwind time and, and it was the pandemic. And, you know, I think you did really well. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot of it, I think, had to do with, you know, working with, with the label, working, you know, directly with like Matt, you know, at yeah. Light in the Attic. And, you know, he, he's, he's such a cool guy. I think it really sort of like helped mm -hmm. me get through it because I've had the opposite uh, experience as well. So um, mm -hmm. I think working with the right people goes a long way. You know, mm -hmm. it's not always about pay or anything like that. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. Um, and then I w wanted to ask if you had uh, something to promote or like, where can my listeners find you? And I realized we didn't even talk about Fix yet, but if you want to like <laughs> just mention the name and, and maybe a little bit about yeah. Fix. Yeah. F fix, fix Design is a... Um, is, is a fictitious business name uh, that I sort of came up with back in like, I think over 20 something years ago. Mm -hmm. um, I just didn't want to call it Masaki design. And I was in that sort of dilemma of like trying to find a web domain and everything I thought was cool was already taken up by somebody else. 
And then I, I kind of came to this whole conclusion of like, well, why don't I just make up a name? And then that way nobody will have the domain name. So yeah. I, I sort of had this idea of like, what if I don't use any vowels? You know, if you don't consider like the Y a vowel. Um, yeah. And I was like, you know, what, what, what happens if I just kind of, you know, play around with a, a name and then a college buddy of mine, you know, had this funny idea. Fix is sort of like, it's, it's, it's kind of between five and six o'clock. <laughs> That's kind of weird. Okay. You know, so I thought, okay, yeah. well, let's just see what happens. And I don't, I just kind of kept it honestly, but um, you can find my work at fixdesign.com. I do have an mm-hmm. Instagram handle mm-hmm. that I think it's just, I think it's just fixed design, P H Y X design. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I, yeah, social media is a whole other thing. I'm, I'm a one man shop. So yeah, you know, I don't have time for that. <laughs> yeah. And I want to, I, I'm always happy when I, when I post something, <laughs> yeah. but then sometimes I catch myself being way too critical and I, and I won't post it and I hesitate and, you know, I have all these drafts, <laughs> Oh yeah. <laughs> you know, where I'm like, I don't know, maybe I shouldn't release this or maybe it's boring or maybe it's not, you know, anything that's interesting or I don't know. I hesitate, uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm familiar with that. Yeah. yeah. I don't know how people post, I don't know, like three things a day. I, it's, it's a weird psychology, you know, um, mm-hmm. like, uh, you know, having this idea of people sort of following you and like, you know, my son watches these guys that just goof around and they have like millions of followers and subscribers and they're flying around the world in a private jet. And they're probably like 20, if maybe not, they're not even 20 yet. It's just a sign of us get of me getting old. That's all. I'm just like, I don't get this at all, but yeah, these like digital natives, they don't even think twice. It's just yeah, that's a good out word there for it. Digital native, yeah. I work for uh, academic marketing, yeah. so <laughs> we have a lot of phrases. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a good one though. Well, there's so much content and from ev- coming at us from every direction that it's it's easy to just want to walk outside and stare at the sky. I don't know. <laughs> I can't imagine. You know, and again, I think this is this is a a, a really it was a good. You know, I was born in 72, but like, Mm -hmm. you know, to see how much the format and technology has changed from 72 Mm -hmm. was an incredible time to be around and to be alive Mm -hmm. because, you know, we, I got a taste of eight tracks, but then, you know, cassette tapes, CDs, you know, records going back Mm -hmm. to records. And it, it just was really fascinating, you know, to see how much technology has evolved, of course, with the iPhone and stuff like that. We got to see a lot of things from you know, an old phone ringing on a wall to like having it in our pocket, you know, we Um, went, we've been through a lot. Yeah. Our generation. And I feel, you know, what's funny is I I was born in 77. So I Uh caught like the tail end of eight tracks or whatever. But like, I remember like when I first started designing, feeling sorry for the designers who, who (laughs) were responsible for those because nobody kept the box. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> no one I knew. It was just the the tape with the label on it. Everyone just threw the box away. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. Who cares about packaging, right? right? Yeah. So the packaging throughout the throughout that time has changed so much. Yeah. Like, yeah. It has and you know, there's a lot of environmental concerns now. People are, you yeah. know, and that's definitely a legitimate concern. And you know, and and so it's always tricky. You know, it's a it's a very <sighs> tough sell to tell you know ask people to like. You know, what if we use like eco-friendly papers or what if we, you know, I, I was watch this, uh, this little documentary on how records are made and how it's made out of PVC. And there's a, comp- there's mm-hmm. a company, I think in England somewhere trying to make records out of PET or something like that. It's like recycled plastics and, mm. you know, it's there except, you know, it's really expensive, really, yeah. really expensive. But right. I, if someone like the Beatles, you know. Or, or a big name artist like took the lead, you know, maybe it can influence people, you know, it'd be hard for an indie label or it'd be hard for something yeah. like, or like, you know, a label like light in the attic to do something like that, you know, uh, right. cause it's cost prohibitive, but, um, mm-hmm. you know, maybe a bit, big record label would invest in something like that, you know, so there's less guilt involved with, you know, doing what, 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 yeah. what I do, you know, with consume it with, yeah, putting it out there and consuming it. Um, yeah. but I like, I like your take on making something more collectible because 
you know, I think it's more wasteful to make something with less materials that's just going to be thrown away than yes. something more yeah. substantial that will be yeah. kept and cherished. And yeah, so I, I really, that's, I believe that print will never die. It just, it's role changes. Yeah, for sure. And it's just like, well, you know, don't make it gimmicky, you know, mm -hmm. at least give it your best, even down to the spine, you know, try to make it, you know, try to make every inch of it, you know, interesting, you know, yes. it's a challenge, but you know, people wow. really care about the cover. So I always like the spines. It's oh, really yeah. weird. I have like this weird fascination for the spines because it's, it's kind of like you put it in a crate and it's like, you see the spine, but like, yes, once the record, the cover sort of like, you know, approved, you know, mm -hmm. usually there's not a lot of going back and forth on the rest of the package, <laughs> uh <-huh>. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but that's a great opportunity for someone like me, you know, it's, it's really, it's really straightforward for Lou, you know, but mm -hmm. I think that is sort of the concept as well, you know? So again, you know, the, the form and content idea of like, you know, trying to like do something with purpose, it, I think that's where style becomes very sort of, uh, you know, prohibitive or mm -hmm. maybe not prohibitive, but like, you know, you can't just apply a style to everything. Right. I'm more into the idea of like hearing what the problem is, what we're trying to do here, and then kind of sticking to, you know, a certain aesthetic that reflects the record, you know? Yes, yes. So in this case, it's very sort of like I'm using Franklin Gothic. It's very straightforward, nuts and mm. bolts, very functional typeface. And so like it, to me, like it reflects that 65 was really popular, you know, for, for very functional purposes. So again, mm -hmm. even down to that, you know, I didn't want anything too ornate or anything too fancy or too contemporary, like just something that felt nuts and bolts. I love it. I think it's perfect. And I also recognize that it interrupts the whole pattern on the cover, which must have been a headache, or maybe not. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I was really lucky. You know, uh -huh. it's. I'm glad that you brought that up because there was this whole issue of balance because, you know, it, the whole title is Lou Reed, right? Mm -hmm. And then Words and Music, May 1965. And I think mm -hmm. at first it had the date, May 17th or something, 1965. Uh -huh. And I was like, oh, no, because right so, – because it kind of threw off the balance. Ah, two, two, three, and two. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So now all of a sudden, Lou has three letters. May has three letters. Reed has four letters. The year has four numbers. Whoa. Right? And then words and music and the ampersand fits ampersand. right in the middle. Oh. I was like, well, man, don't change the title. We, we have ah. to keep this. It has to stay this way now, you know, <laughs> because I'm falling in love with it, you know. <laughs> Uh, and it's stuck. It's stuck. So like, yeah, even down to that, it's like I, I, I like the way the type sort of fits within sort of the bitmap grid and the, the die cut grid, you know? Oh, my gosh. Nuances. Well done. Yeah. Well, incredible work. This is so inspiring. Um, thank you so much for speaking with me. I'm going to take what of you course. said to, to mind, try to you know, mm -hmm. why, why not line up the, the holes with the bitmap? <laughs> right. Go the extra step. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Spend but, uh, another like, you know, like <laughs> hours and hours on it. Yeah. <laughs> but you're going to, yeah. but, but it's so satisfying to look at. I'm so glad you did that. <laughs> yeah, that, that really, um, I don't even know if I told Matt that, but like, oh my God, that whole process of really was I think one of the most challenging things, you know, with this package was trying to align what structural engineers can do with the capacity of the paper and like not ruining the, the density or the, the structure of the entire package. And also taking those, you know, die lines and, and aligning it, you know, I think was, um, took, took, a took a lot of back and forth. You know. Well, well done. Yeah. And I'm going to contact you. the Grammys after this and you're <laughs> hopefully get you another nomination. <laughs> well, anyway, yeah. thank you again. It was so great speaking with you. I'm going to give you back your day and uh, thank you yeah. so much. Yeah. Thank it's, you. it's, it's so nice to, 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 to know that people are interested, you know, uh, in, oh. in, in, in what I do. And, uh, so it's, and it's always fun to kind of like vocalize, you know, all these things that are in my head as I'm working on something yeah. and sort of look back on it and be sort of forced to articulate it all. 
So yes. really appreciate it. It's, oh. it's always a lot of fun. It's my pleasure. And uh, I know my listeners are going to love it. So thank you. I hope so. Let's see. A lot of critics out there. <laughs> <laughs> nah. <laughs> I doubt it. Well, thank you, Masaki. Bye. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye.